Okay, so we're returning from our maiden voyage with the Mazda Speed Miata after getting it all back together. And I noticed coolant leaking again, not from the water pump area, so that's nice. It looks like it's coming from the upper radiator area. I do apologize for the background noise. My neighbors apparently have their landscapers on a perfect timer when they see me get the camera out. They want to come over and make some noise so what we're gonna do <laughs> isn't that always the case guys i've got my coolant system pressure tester which i've got hooked up right here and we're gonna go ahead and pressurize the system and see specifically where that leak is coming from now that's a valuable thing to do you don't want to just start buying parts especially in a, a radiator which is probably the most expensive part of the cooling system honestly so let's go ahead and pressurize it and see where we're at so go ahead and tighten it down so we have a, a good lock here and we're gonna see I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see coolant sputtering up right here. See that coming up right there on the plastic top of the radiator? And that's a known failure for these plastic radiators. So we're gonna just get the OEM unit, order that up and have it replaced. Hey, that's not bad. 15 years and 160,000 miles on an OEM radiator. Not bad at all. We saw the bad test results of pressure testing the coolant system. So this radiator needs to come out. Wouldn't that be awesome if we knew that when it was already out of the car? It's always the case, guys. So this is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. We're gonna have to remove, obviously, the intake hose, the intercooler hose, all our connectors again, drain the coolant, take these brackets off. Once we have the radiator off, we have to switch all the fans over, obviously undoing our clips and everything too, but we're gonna have to unscrew these. I think there's quite a few bolts holding them in place, and then we'll mount the fan and fan shroud to the new radiator. I ordered an OEM unit, so hopefully everything bolts up. You wanna be careful with that stuff. Sometimes when you get an aftermarket one, the fan holes sometimes don't line up if it's not specific for your car. And just a heads up, the Mazda Speed Miata radiator is unique to that car. So this car, it has a wider thickness than the regular NB Miata. So that's something to know when you go and order parts. So I'm just gonna put the OEM unit in. I didn't wanna go after market. I just wanted to keep this thing stock and OEM as much as possible. So let's go ahead and remove all this stuff that we already had out of the car once already. I also forgot to mention we have to pull off that whole large shroud underneath to get access to the bottom of the radiator. So that's another fun step. After draining all our coolant out of the system again, we're gonna go ahead and start on doing all this stuff we need to remove to get the radiator out. Let's start that. Now we have to remove the fan shroud and fans from the old radiator since we're gonna be using that and they worked great. So we've got five 10 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and undo those. Just like that, nice and easy, separates from the radiator. Of course we're gonna clean this old fan shroud before we attach it to a brand new aluminum radiator. All about the details. Today is a very cool day because we're getting the replacement for this installed in the Mazda Speed Miata. This old OEM leaky radiator made it 160,000 miles and for that, good job buddy. But it's time for you to go. In comes the new hotness. Oh yes, here we are. So we went with an OEM unit it's just, it saves me the hassle, all the mounting points, which you can see are exactly the same to mount our dual fan shroud and all our electrical connectors and everything else. So it's just, for me, I know you probably spend a little bit more, but it's worth it. Trying to keep this thing OEM in stock. I know everything's gonna line up where the radiator coolant lines go in. 
and just everything else. I know it's gonna mount up on the car flawlessly, so excellent. Uh, good time to attach our fans and fan shroud to the new radiator. And this is the part where you're happy you bought the OEM replacement for sure. First step is removing this plastic bezel that's around the headlight. Gently pry it off. I like to use a combination of my hands and plastic trim tools to pry it off. You don't want to crack it. These things are actually still pretty valuable and there's a lot of folks looking for them. So I want to remove them just in case I choose to sell them or reuse them without breaking. Let's go ahead and start that process. And there you go, removal in one piece. What you're left with is a lot of this adhesive material, uh, pretty gnarly stuff. We're gonna go ahead and remove that at this time. Scrape as much as you can off. You're gonna be using probably your fingernails or plastic tools a lot to get to it. And then your friend Goo Gone. You get yourself some kind of adhesive remover. Goo Gone is a good option in this situation. So let's go ahead and get this removed before we can even think about starting to restore this headlight lens. Obviously, if you don't have these lens covers or dress up or whatever you want to call them pieces, then you can skip this step. Now that we've removed most of that adhesive, we're going to move to 320 grit. This will be your first step if you didn't have that headlight shroud. So this is where you'll be starting off. Everything's gonna be wet sand, guys. So go ahead, get your 320 ready. Go ahead and wet sand the headlight completely. I like to start off with kind of circular motions to make sure I'm getting everything off, especially these deep kind of wears in the plastic. We wanna get down to that. And then finish it off with side to side sanding motion. That way you can see only horizontal scratches. So when you're doing your next higher number grit sandpaper, you'll see if you're actually getting rid of those scratches or not. So just move quickly, but make sure you cover the entire headlight. You want a uniform sanded surface on this when you're done. The car is going into paint after I'm done with this, so at a further date, this car is gonna get a complete respray. So I'm not really too concerned with taping off the paint. Uh, it's gonna get painted anyway, but if you have <laughs> if you have a car that's not about to get painted, obviously use some painter's tape and mask off this area so you're not sanding your paint. Something to keep in mind when you're doing the 320 grit is any imperfections in the lens cover, you wanna get those out at this step. This is your most aggressive grit sandpaper that we're gonna be using. Make sure you get out all those imperfections at this phase. If they're still there, the higher the grit number we go, the smoother the sandpaper, you're not gonna get rid of those. So go ahead, be aggressive where you need to be, but still hold back a little bit since this is 320 grit. Now after you're done with your 320 grit, this headlight is gonna be scratched up pretty bad. Not gonna lie, it's gonna look a little shocking. It's not just gonna be cloudy, but you'll be able to see the actual scratches. 
And now the rest of the process is going to be removing the scratches we put in. Now we needed to put some pretty heavy scratches in here because there were quite a few imperfections in the cover of this headlight. So to get those out we had to use a little bit of elbow grease combined with some 320 grit and we got most of them out. Now we climb the ladder of sandpaper grit and move our way up. The next step is 400 grit. We're going to do the same thing horizontal strokes pretty much the whole headlight start off a little heavier then get lighter as you go all right let's hit the 400 grit remember wet sand After we're finished with the 400, you can see it's starting to get more of a fine clouding effect, not just so much scratches. Next step, 600. Keep doing what you're doing, guys. Time for our thousand grit. You know the drill. Wet sand only. Now this is a very fine paper. So this is really gonna make that lens get clear. If you've got air in your garage, you can also use the air gun to kind of dry it off and see where you stand on the level of haziness in between coats. Now we step up to 2000 grit. So this is the super fine stuff guys. We're getting there. As I'm doing the 2000 and then following with the 3000, this headlight should be starting to look really clear as I'm sanding. Let's see if we're doing the right thing here. I mean, see that, how that lens is just about clear with the water and the sandpaper? We are getting a very flat surface here. Just finished our 2000 grit, and as you can see, very cloudy lens still. Believe it or not, some people stop here. They use a rubbing compound, a polishing compound, and a wax, and you can make these headlights look pretty dang good. The only thing is you're not dealing with a lot of longevity there because the lens really doesn't have a protective coating on it at this time. So we're gonna go one step further. You know me, the obsessive type. We're gonna use a 3000 grit sandpaper to make this as smooth as possible. It's gonna look super clear. We're gonna let that completely air dry and then our next step is what really seals the lens. So let's get this 3000 grit going. I mean, just look at the lens now, guys. How about that, right? I hope that's showing up good on video. You can see how it's almost perfectly clear. This 3000 grit is a very fine polisher. Now, it is gonna haze up, of course. And that's why we're gonna use a clear coat to fill those little microscopic imperfections and scratches. But it's gonna look pretty good after this, I promise you. Before we clear coat, you definitely want to tape off and put some kind of protective, you can use a paint drop cloth or any kind of garbage bag or whatever you want to cover up the rest of your car so you don't spray it with clear coat. But just do that, tape it down around the headlight. As you can see after all our sanding, look how clear this headlight already is. It's pretty awesome. Before we lay down the clear coat, go ahead and hit it with some isopropyl alcohol. Time to lay down this clear. Shake your can really well. Make sure the temperature is right where you want it, in the area where you're painting, not too cold. And I prefer very light coats when I'm working with clear coats. We're gonna put three coats down, wait a couple minutes between each layer, and then let it dry a full 24 hours before we do our next step.
nice and light. Resist the urge to coat the whole lens with it. Any kind of run at this point would be horrible and you'd have to talk about sanding that back. So, you know, I'd rather do a series of very light coats than try to rush it and have to undo a mistake. Time for our second coat. Okay, for our third and final coat, lay it on pretty good. Make sure you get around the edges, try a different angle. This is the coat we need to make count, so. Now we're gonna let this cure 24 hours, and at that point, we're gonna go ahead and buff this down. No matter how good I think I've done it or laid down clear coat from an aerosol can, I always get orange peel, which we'll see tomorrow when we resume this operation. Don't be shocked when you see that already. I mean, let's be brutally honest. <laughs> the lights you're looking at right now are at least 100 times better than they looked before we started restoring them. So we're already in a good place. Let's approach this tomorrow, get that orange peel down, and really make these things shine. And 24 hours passes just like that. Now it's time to go ahead and move this cover off and we're gonna go ahead and buff out with some rubbing compound to get these lights nice and clear. We're gonna use the DA Meguiar's Power Sander. It's a nice little hand unit on my drill. We're also gonna use some Ultimate Compound. Get these a little more clearer. Now we didn't get a lot of orange peel with the clear coat, so this rubbing compound in our polisher really does shine it up pretty nice. We can do a second run to make it even cleaner, but as you can see in the video, headlight is looking fantastic. After doing the rubbing compound, we wanna go ahead and seal it with a nice coat of wax. Go ahead and select a nice solid wax to go ahead and seal up the work you've done. Let that wax haze up and give it one final wipe down and we are done. There we have our final product, a nice and shiny headlight to match the one we've already done. And this looks fantastic, huge upgrade to the aesthetics of the car, looking really sharp. And now these headlights look like they should. Just look at that difference. Very happy with the outcome. The front of the car totally looks so much better now. And when we get that nice fresh coat of paint on here, this thing is gonna look amazing. Very good value added.